Magandang hapon po. Magandang magandang hapon sa inyong tanan. And of course, uh, good afternoon po to to everyone. My name is Ryan of PPSA and I will be your host for today's session po. Uh, this is our sixth installment of our Usapan series and our last Usapan session po for the year. Pero hindi po nagtatapos ngayong, uh, nagtatapos ba siya ngayong taon pero marami pa tayong susunod na Usapan series sa susunod pong taon by next year. So, throughout the 2003, we are able to talk about different agriculture topics through our Usapan series po, tulad po nito ngayong hapon. So, from cacao po to coffee, women empowerment, and even digital innovations. Last month, you also featured Bayer Crop Science Philippines and talk about how we can shape uh, a more sustainable future for rice to ensure food security for our future generation. At sa lahat po ng episode ng Usapan Session uh, uh, natin uh, ngayon pong taon, uh, we collaborated with the Philippine Seed Industry Association or the PSIA for a very important topics. Ang usapan ng seeds or binhe, kung tawagin po natin, ano po yung boto or binhe. Ang importante, uh, imp napaka-importante po ng usaping ito dahil sa binhi po nag-uumpisa ang buhay ng karamihan sa ating mga pananim. At napakahalaga ng elementong ito sa ating food supply. Ano po? Seeds are the foundation of our uh, life for both humans and animals on our planet. They are responsible for the food we consume, the fiber that makes our clothes, and much of the, of the everyday materials we use. Plus, when it comes to farming, seeds are also the key players in making agriculture work. Kung wala nga pong buto, wala din naman tayong itatanim at wala rin po tayong aanihin. Ano po? At maliban sa usaping binhe, may iba pa tayong topics na pag-uusapan ngayong araw po, ngayong hapon. Kasama na dyan ang hydroponics. Yes, you heard it right. Medyo nag-level up. Hydroponics na po pagdating sa farming. No? Um, and also kasama na dyan ang seedling protection techniques. At paano nga ba na ibabahagi ang kalaman or knowledge transfer sa ating uh, vegetable value chains. So, kaya naman, perfect na perfect ang session na ito sa ating mga plantito at plantita. So, taas ang kamay dyan sa mga membro ng plantito plantita, ano po, which is, uh, ako po ay guilty kasi during the lockdown, alam ko may mga naka-experience dito, both planting ng vegetables and ornamental, ano po, order online, delivery, and then tanim sa bahay. So, yun po. Um, kaya naman po, kahit ako ay very, very excited uh, sa hapong ito na matuto at mapakinggan ng ating mga speakers ngayong hapon. But before that, meron lang po tayong konting reminders, lalong-lalo na po sa ganitong platform online. Ano po, tulad po nito sa Zoom. So first po, the session is being recorded. Ano po, please rename using the following format, your organization po plus yung pangalan. Your name po, for example po yung sa akin, PPSA, and Ryan. So pangatlo, please remain on mute po. Napaka-importante po nito. Please remain on mute po while our speakers are presenting. Should you have any questions po with our speakers, please put them on the chat box and we will address them later. So gamitin po natin ang ating chat box para lang tayo nagchat-chat using the messenger po sa Facebook. So yan po. And if you have experiencing any technical difficulties po while on the Zoom, please chat ulit po sa ating chat box. So our uh, team from PPSA uh, will accommodate us. Ano po? And last but not the least, uh, gawin po nating uh, safe and uh, keep this safe space for everyone to share their thoughts. Wala pong tama at mali, lalong lalo na po during the, our Q&A uh, portion. So wag po kayong mahihiyang magtanong, sabi nga po ni... Ano, Sino nga yung asawa ni, ni Fernando po? Huwag po kayo mahihiya magtanong. Or kung kayo, mo, kayo, kayo naman po ay nahihiya to raise your voice to ask questions with our uh, speakers later, uh, pwede nyo, nyo rin po gamitin ang ating chat box. Doon na lang po kayo mag-type ng inyong questions at pipick upin po yan ng ating team at itatry natin uh, ipasagot sa ating uh, mga speakers later on. Ano po? Okay. To formally po, to start the session and introduce our... Featured organization, please welcome the Executive Director of PSAA, ang namiss naming lahat, uh, Sir Gabriel Romero. Sir Gab, magandang hapon po. Thank you, Ryan. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Thank you for joining us in today's Usapan Session on SEED. Before anything else, allow me to thank the Philippines Partnership for Sustainable Agriculture for organizing this learning session and collaborating with us 
the Philippine Seed Industry Association. Parang kambal yung aming asosasyon. Eh. To talk about seeds o yung tinatawag nga natin na binhi. PSIA works with private and public institutions involved in the development, production, and distribution of high-quality vegetable and cereal seeds for the Filipino farmers. Bakit seeds? Why seeds? Well, the world we live in today live in today faces a multitude of challenges from a growing global population to the need for sustainable agricultural practices. In this context, the seed industry takes on a central role in shaping the future of agriculture, ensuring not only an abundant harvest but also the long-term well-being of our communities. So our agenda for today's session is nothing short of inspiring as we will delve into key aspects of the Philippine seed industry. We will discuss the current state of the seed industry, no less by our president, recognizing its pivotal role in nourishing our nation and fostering food security. We will explore how the private sector can contribute to its growth, driving innovation and sustainability while also learning about the innovative techniques employed in seedling protection. Moreover, the webinar will take us on a journey through the emerging trends in hydroponics, a method that has been revolutionizing agriculture in the Philippines and around the world. Lastly, we will emphasize the value of knowledge transfer in vegetable chains. Napakahalaga po niyan. It is an essential component in ensuring that our agricultural practices continue to evolve and flourish. Our panel of experts from PSIA are here today to share their insights and experiences, shedding light on the past, present, and future of the Philippine seed industry. As we collectively strive to build a more resilient and sustainable future, their knowledge and expertise will undoubtedly be the guiding light in our journey. So without further ado, let us embark on this enlightening voyage of knowledge, innovation, and sustainable growth within the Philippine seed industry. We encourage you to actively participate. Magtanong po kayo and engage with our speakers throughout the session. Your contributions and active involvement are integral to the, to the success of this event. Once again, thank you for joining us and we look forward to a fruitful and insightful discussion. Let's sow the seeds of knowledge and together nurture a thriving tomorrow for agriculture and beyond. Magandang hapon at magandang bini sa inyong lahat. Back to you, Ryan. Thank you, Sir Gabi. Uh, we look forward to learning about the seed sector. Ano po, we're also curious to know more about the, the challenges, opportunities, and the different ways other sector can contribute to the sustainability of the seed industry. Now, let's get the conversation going. Uh, our next speaker po is the Head of Partnerships and Alliances at East West Seed. She joined the company drawn by the mission of empowering farmers. Prior to her role in East West Seed, she had a long um, career in the government po, holding the key positions in the Department of Agriculture as a Regional Director and Executive Director of the Agricultural Training Institute. She is uh, currently wearing multiple hats as the president of PSIA and also our uh, PPSA private uh, sector co-chair. So without further ado, po, uh, join me in welcoming Dr. Mary Ansayok. Maps, uh, magandang hapon po. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Ryan, for the kind introduction. Uh, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Uh, thank you for joining us in this Usapang Binhi. Uh, I see some familiar names in the list of participants, and I, I look forward to having a very interactive uh, session with uh, all of you. Again, thank you, PPSA, for uh, hosting this uh, Usapang Binhi. So I will be uh, speaking on the role of the seed sector in food security and its uh, contribution in advancing the Sustainable Development Goals. Next slide, please. So um, you have seen this briefly in the, in the video, but let me just go through it again. 
So uh, the Philippine Seed Industry Association is the country's recognized prime mover of the seed industry, contributing to uplifting farmers' lives and sustaining development of Philippine agriculture. We represent the industry that provides seeds and services of international quality standards, and we do this through partnerships with seed industry stakeholders with a passion to improve farmers' lives, access and dissemination of information and technology developments on the seed industry to stakeholders, and proactive participation of members in PSIA programs and activities. Next slide, please. Uh, we were established in 1976, and at the moment, we have 32 members, 13 multinational companies, uh, 10 companies, two government, one academe. Academe is the uh, IPB UP Los Banos from government. We have Phil Rice and Bureau of Plant Industry, and uh, six dealers. You can see the list of members here in this slide. I will not go through them. One by one. Next slide, please. The um, we work with the uh, committees. There are uh, currently six uh, standing committees. We have the membership development, variety awareness, phytosanitary and international trade, intellectual property and ethics, technology development, and communications and social media. Next slide. Now let me uh, now uh, focus on the role of the seed sector in food security. As already mentioned in the introduction by uh, Ryan and also in the opening remarks of Gabby, seed is the starting point of agriculture production. In fact, in ISF we say seed is life. There are no good crops without good seeds. Next slide, please. According to the FAO, the main challenges that global agriculture will face in the coming decades are producing 70% more food for an additional 2.3 billion people by 2050, while at the same time combating poverty and hunger, and using scarce resources more efficiently. I think the, the, the uh, key word now is doing more with less. We have to use scarce resources more efficiently and, of course, adapting to climate change. And on top of this, you know, other challenges like the, the, the growing uh, world population and the rapid urbanization. Next slide, please. So the seed sector thrives on innovation. Plant breeding is necessary to develop new, resilient, and high-yielding crop varieties to address challenges like climate change, disease pressure, and expanding consumer needs. And uh, one of these plant breeding innovations is gene editing. And, you know, to be able to make use of this technology, we need consistent science-based regulatory frameworks that foster innovation while ensuring safety and environmental protection. Next slide, please. Uh, talking about intellectual property, R&D investments are generally long-term and require significant financial resources and expertise. IP mechanisms incentivize innovation by allowing a return on investment in breeding programs. Private seed companies invest up to 30% of turnover into research and development to develop innovative crop varieties. It takes up to 15 years to develop and test a new plant variety. Next slide, please. On the topic of movement of seed, seed is a globally traded product. Producing seeds involves many steps from breeding new varieties to field testing, multiplying, packaging, and sale. As seed moves around the world, seed companies take careful measures to ensure that quality and prevent the spread of pests and diseases. The industry has the same goal as governments to ensure that only healthy seed moves around the world. This is a mutual objective. Next slide, please. On genetic resources, 
Well, genetic resources are material of plant, animal, microbial, or other origin containing hereditary traits. For plant breeders, genetic resources are vital components in their work to develop and improve varieties. Genetic resources are keys to unlock many agricultural challenges. By valuing, conserving, and using them wisely, we can continue to innovate and adapt our crop varieties. Private seed companies take an active role in genetic resources conservation. Next slide, please. Climate change. Agriculture is very sensitive to weather and climate. It relies heavily on land, water, and other natural resources. Climate changes in temperature, precipitation, and frost timing can make farming more difficult. The seed sector is committed to contributing climate change solutions through more resilient varieties of crops and helping farmers adapt to environmental changes. Next slide, please. Seed choice for farmers. This is uh, uh, very important. The seed industry strives to provide farmers with diverse, well-adapted, high-quality seed choices, as well as services and support to optimize productivity and yield for their local conditions. Because uh, farmers, uh, you know, they vary you know, from, from their, the, the size of the farm and to their farming activities. And seed choices include open pollinate, use of open pollinated seeds, hybrid GM, farm safe seeds. Next slide, please. <clears throat> now on illegal seed practices, illegal seed practices take on many forms, selling counterfeit seeds, fraudulent labeling, intellectual property infringements, regulatory infringements, trademark infringements and theft of parental material. These practices negatively impact farmers as they reduce crop productivity. Also, they negatively impact researchers. It discourage, discourages investments in R&D. Also, it negatively impacts the country's phyto phytosanitary and plant health status, uh, resulting from for example, diseases spreading from uncertified seeds. And the seed sector itself, there would be loss of confidence and weakened trust. Next slide, please. Now, um, may I uh, proceed now to the seed sector's uh, uh, contribution in advancing the sustainable development goals. Next slide, please. So, the, the the United Nations has set the sustainable development goals, which are supposed to be achieved in 2030. But the the way things are, I think governments are asked to 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 expedite or at least you know fast track the uh, uh, implementation or at least uh, achievement of this of the different targets, no target uh, for the attainment of the SDGs because it's still, we are still, I think, not there yet. It's still quite, we're still quite far, no, in the targets. Thanks, slide, please. <clears throat> so um, on the SDG one, uh, no poverty, uh, the seed sector, you know, uh, contributes to income diversification. And even later, you will hear about income diversification and crop diversification as farming provides income to rural communities. The seed sector helps these smallholder farmers increase their productivity and income while providing food for 108 million Filipinos. Next slide, please. On SDG 2, zero hunger. So PSIA impacts food security, nutrition, and health across the Philippines by literally seeding the agriculture industry of the country. So cereals provide energy and vegetables provide not only the calories, but also micronutrients, and it combats uh, hidden hunger. Next slide, please. Uh, SDG 4, quality education. The seed sector promotes lifelong education and work skills 
through knowledge transfer and engaging the youth also and also women in agriculture. You will hear that also later from one of the speakers uh, this afternoon. Uh, next slide, please. On SDG 5, uh, gender equality. The seed sector provides equal opportunities for men and women in developing their business and professional skills. Next slide, please. Uh, SDG 8, Decent Work and Economic Growth. With the use of high quality seeds and better agronomic practices, farming provides livelihood to millions of smallholder farmers with an average land holding of two hectares. The seed sector generates jobs in the rural areas, not only in commercial crop production, but also in seed production. Hybrid seed production is quite intensive so workers and pollinators in the community are employed. Other players in the vegetable supply chain are providing work. And these are the assemblers, traders, consolidators, uh, retailers, and wholesalers. Next slide, please. SDG 11, Sustainable Cities and Communities. The seed sector promotes urban agriculture or home gardening through the conduct of trainings and setting up of urban farms in partnership with government agencies, universities, and uh, NGOs. As an example, a PSIA has been partnering with the Bureau of Plant Industry in setting up community gardens in selected cities around Metro Manila. And uh, we are, in fact, uh, coming up with uh, another uh, uh, partnership a project with BPI on setting up uh, demos in the BPI uh, research centers uh, in five BPI centers across the country. Next slide, please. SDG, tw SDG 12, responsible consumption and production. The seed sector also employs the inclusive business model. We uh, strive to to uh, do partnerships across the value chain, not only from the production side, from farmers, but also the food processors and even up to the consumers. And um, we promote a good agricultural practices and also we promote increased vegetable consumption. As we all know, the, the Philippines still has one of the lowest per capita vegetable consumption in this part of the world. <clears throat> Next slide, please. 13, SDG 13, climate action. I've also uh, discussed this a little earlier, but um, we contribute no, the, to uh, some solutions to climate change no, by breeding for disease resistance, this made it for pests and diseases and insects. And this reduces heavy use of pesticides. We also breed for 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 uh, varieties that could uh, that could use water and other resources more efficiently. So also better use of water resources, and for some even the you know um, technologies like uh, drip irrigation and protected cultivation uh, help. Um, and in terms, in times of extreme weather disturbances, in times of drought, we also promote shifting, sometimes from field crops to vegetable crops during periods of drought, or vice versa. In terms, in other, uh, uh, in other cases of extreme weather disturbances. Next slide, please. Uh, SDG fifteen: Life on land. The seed sector contributes to conservation and sustainable use of plant genetic resources by supporting national uh, gene banks. Uh, we know we all know the 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 basis no, of of plant breeding is really the use of uh, of uh, plant genetic resources, and uh, seed companies uh, support this uh, conservation and use of. Uh, uh, and sustainable use of plant genetic resources by assisting uh, national gene banks uh, as an example uh, for like for example for for east west seed we are 
uh, we have an, a memorandum of agreement with the uh, NPGRL, the National Plant Genetic Resources Laboratory of IPB. We help them uh, regenerate some uh, vegetable collection, help them characterize, uh, also helping them characterize it. And we plant them in our uh, research uh, center in, in Lipa. Next slide, please. And last but not least, uh, SDG 17 partnerships for the goals. So the seed sector believes that we cannot do all this alone. We are one of the many actors providing solutions to farmers. We collaborate with a number of partners from the government, universities, and like-minded NGOs in promoting sustainable agriculture. The picture on the left, if you, you see, uh, that was the uh, uh, harvest festival, uh, we which PSIA actually held in close collaboration with the uh, provincial government of Bulacan. We see here the vice governor of Bulacan, Alex Castro, the P, the the Pau, uh, GG Carillo, and other from also from DA and from PICAF. And it was really uh, quite a successful activity. A lot of farmers uh, were present and they were able to, to see the, the new varieties and even technologies that would help you know, them in their farming. And the picture on the right, that was uh, PSIA was also uh, actively involved. In fact, PSIA was the president of the uh, Federation of Plant Science uh, uh, Associations of the Philippines, and this was held, this conference was held in Puerto Princesa. And of course, there are other partnerships that, uh, that uh, we have and we would like to have with uh, other uh, uh, NGOs and other organizations. Next slide, please. <clears throat> So I would like to 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 end my talk with uh, a favorite quote of a uh, uh, founder uh, of East West Seed and also a World Food Prize uh, laureate uh, awardee, Simon Groth. He said that a good seed can change the lives of millions. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Back to you, Ryan. Thank you, Max, uh, for a very wonderful uh, presentation. Po. And, you know, to add on what you shared, it's really thanks to constant improvement of, in farming techniques and technology that the seed industry has not only been keeping up with a growing global demand for food, uh, we're actually doing it in a more eco-friendly way. Ano po? That means the seed industry is helping uh, feed more people, making healthier food and uh, using fewer resources while giving a wider variety of high-quality products. Uh, and all of this is happening with a smaller impact on, a, on, a, on the environment. Um, um, maliit man ang binhe, napakalaki man ang impact sa atin. Yun, yun yung sinasabi ni Maps kanina. Ano po? So now that we've heard uh, from Maps the important role of seeds in the food security in our Country in advancing the UN SDGs, it's time to dive into the best strategies to grow uh, our seeds. Ano po, our next speaker po is a licensed agriculturist and a published uh, researcher with a strong background in plant pathology. With his wealth of knowledge and experiences, he will help us to ensure that uh, we are farming smart. To share with us about the innovative techniques in seedling protection, Let's welcome the Technical Support Supervisor of Haverson, Mr. Harold Panisa. Magandang, ha uh, magandang hapon po, Sir Harold. Good afternoon po. Magandang hapon po sa lahat. Sa mayang hapon day sa tanan, especially sa mga taga Mindanao. I am Harold. So currently I'm here in uh, Bukidnon. So hopefully na mga taga Bukidnon dari ah. So this afternoon, as a kapwa niyo po na farmer, I'm happy po to discuss my topic, which is uh, guarding seedlings, the GP approach to 
soilboard disease prevention. So as a plant pathologist and a uh, kapa po nyo na farmer, so napaka-importante po talaga na safe po yung... Hello po? Uh, okay po ba? So ayun, so okay na po. So, so as a kapwa farmer, uh, yun nga, napaka-importante po talaga na safe at healthy po yung seedling natin. So, while we hope our seedlings to be healthy and vigorous, some of us have likely encountered a common problem such as seedling collapse. So, napakadami po talaga na mga farmer dito sa Pinas ang nakaka-encounter po talaga nito na problem which is due to soilborne disease. So, yun nga po, uh, isa siya sa pinaka-major na problem. So, as a pathologist, for how many years, ang dami ko na pong na-encounter, na-receive na report from different farmers across the country with different crops regarding po sa soilborne disease. So, ano po bang impact nito as a farmer? Una, wasted time. So yun nga, sa simula pa lang, pag prepare ng materials, pag pupunla, pag didilig, pag fertilize, pag hihintay, ang dami po talagang mawi waste na time, especially kung nagka-disease po yung seedling po natin. Then, wasted money. So sa buto pa lang, gasto sa seedling tray, gasto sa seedling media, fertilizer, pesticide, gastos pa sa uh, manpower natin. So medyo malaki po talaga ang impact niya. And lastly, ang wasted potential income. So per seedling, alam naman natin na ilang 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 bunga sana ang i-expect natin kaso yun nga. So ano po ba ang mga causes ng soilborne diseases? So there are several plant pathogenic fungi and bacteria which may cause the disease. This include Pythium, Rhizoctonia, Telabiopsis, Fusarium, Rostonia, at dami-dami pa. So ito po ay mga scientific name ng mga fungi and bacteria na plant pathogenic na nagkukos po ng soil borne disease. So the identity of the culprit may seem unimportant. But if the problem persists, knowledge of the causal or microorganism will help us to know how to alter the environmental conditions or even find a product for the management. So same lang din po sa atin na tao, pag hindi po natin alam kung ano po yung cost ng sakit natin, maaari din na magkamit nga tayo ng gamot pero hindi pala akma doon sa kailangan natin i-control or i-manage na sakit. So same lang din po yan sa mga pananim po natin. So ano po ba yung mga factors causing soilborne diseases? So ito po, um, poor sanitation practices. So sample po dito yung hindi paglilinis ng mga nursery, kung saan-saan nakalagay ang mga farm tools like boots, pala, timba, o kung ano-ano pang mga gamit na pwedeng magdala ng sakit. So yun, isa po talaga yun. Then, uh, overcrowding. So madalas hindi ito napapansin. So minsan sa mga nagsisidling, Dahil nga madami ang buhay na seedling, syempre masayang masaya ka. Pero kalauna napapansin mo na unti-unti nang nalalanta yung mga seedlings mo. So yun, dahil yun sa soilborne disease. Kasi pag overcrowded po yung uh, seedlings natin, syempre uh, meron pong competition sa water, nutrients, sunlight. So may mga seedling po tayo na payat, lanky, may mga seedling na uh, short. Hindi pantay-pantay yung height. So, yun po. And then, pag overcrowded po, mas prone po na uh, mas mataas po yung moisture ng mga seedling po natin. Which is same with the overwatering. Pag mataas po yung moisture sa seedlings uh, media po natin, uh, mas prone po to na pamuhayan ng mga plant pathogenic fungi and bacteria which causes yung seedling uh, seed soilborne diseases. Then lastly, ang poor seedling media. So kahit sa ang parte sa bansa, madami ng mga farmers ang may kanya-kanyang seedling media na ginagamit. Siyempre, nakadepende ito sa choice ng farmer. Kung ito ba ay base experience, kung ano ang nalaman niya na ginamit o nirekomenda ng kapwa farmer or agriculturist, or kung ano ang available sa kapanyang paligid, 
or pwede ding combination. So ang dami po talagang ang dami pong mga mali especially dito sa pagse-select ng uh, media. May iba na gumagamit ng chicken dung. Okay naman ang chicken dung pero pag masyado po kasi mataas yung chicken dung natin, mataas yung ratio sa chicken dung natin sa media, uh, mainit po kasi ang chicken dung. Then may mga iba uh, gumagamit ng uh, rice hull. So may ratio lang po ng rice hull na okay for seedling. Then may mga seedling din na hindi okay for rice hull. So ano-ano ba ang mga tips to manage yung soilborne diseases? So una, uh, proper sanitation, syempre. Paglilinis ng nursery natin, pag-aayos kung saan ay kalagay, nakalagay yung mga gamit. Then, uh, kailangan na ang seedling tray po natin is nakaangat, nakalagay po sa seedling table. Uh, hindi po direct sa lupa kasi mas prone po siya sa uh, insect pest, mas prone din sa diseases, especially pag nakalabas na yung mga roots. Then, uh, proper spacing. So, talking about proper spacing, ang um, pinag-uusapan po natin dito ay ang seedling tray. Uh, especially for vegetable growers, na gumamit po tayo ng uh, tamang seedling tray depende sa type ng crop po natin. So, meron para iba-ibang seedling tray. So, meron po tayong uh, 128 holes, which is usually ginagamit po to for brassica like cabbage, uh, Chinese cabbage. Then, ginagamit din to for lettuce. Yung iba for herbs, ginagamit din po to yung mga small seeded crop po. Then, uh, meron po tayong 104 holes, which is usually ginagamit po to for solanaceous, like yung uh, talong, kamatis, sili. Then, uh, usually ginagamit din to for cooker bits. May iba gumagamit nito for cooker bits, uh, like yung kalabasa, watermelon, melon, ampalaya, patola. Then, uh, Meron din po tayong uh, 50 holes, which is uh, usually ginagamit din po siya for cooker bit. May mga farmer din na gumagamit ng 50 hole tray for cooker bits, especially yung gusto na mas uh, malaki yung spacing between uh, seedling nila. Then yung iba naman ginagamit to for uh, flowers. So next is ang monitoring. So uh, as a far as a farmer as a seedling grower, so kailangan kailangan po talaga natin i-monitor yung nursery natin, yung seedling natin, especially pag may uh, symptom na ng sakit. So once na may unti-unti na tayo nakikita na symptom ng sakit, uh, eliminate na po natin yung mga nagkasakit. Then uh, yung mga insect pest, kailangan po natin tingnan. Uh, then yung bong nursery po natin. Then uh, pesticide application. So sa pesticide application naman, uh, it's either organic, uh, paggamit ng mga uh, beneficial microorganisms or paggamit ng mga plant extracts. Then meron din tayong synthetic, which is yung mga uh, commercialized na mga uh, chemical fungicides. Then yung iba naman is gumagamit, ay, pwede naman tayong gumamit ng uh, hot water for sterilization. So it, isa to sa pinaka, ay, isa to sa cheapest na way to sterilize yung seedling media po natin. So, the day or morning before magpunla po tayo, uh, lagyan po natin ng mainit na tubig yung media natin. Then, pagkahapon or kinabukasan, yun. As long as okay na yung temperature ng media natin, okay na po tayo magpunla. Then, lastly, is yung right seedling media. So, talking about right seedling media, dapat po yung gamitin natin na seedling media ay pathogen free so wala dapat sakit and insect free so dapat wala din siyang insekto and also yung right seedling media ay dapat mapo-promote niya yung good rooting ng seedling po natin in this part also we offer to all our farmers the GP7C coco pellets from Haverson Enterprises so ano ba tong GP so medyo bago po to sa atin so ito po yung GP namin uh, so GP7C cocoa pellets is made from cocoa choir pit enclosed with a biodegradable film. Itong white po na to, 100% uh, biodegradable film po yan. It provides a stable and controlled environment for seeds, cuttings, 
or even yung mga tissue cultures ko so dito sa Mindanao madami ang nagti-tissue culture ng saging. GP7C is free from pathogen or insect pests as it undergoes sterilization through exposure to high temperature plus drying in its manufacture. And also GP7C is applicable for open field hydroponics and aquaponics. So sa mga naga-hydroponics and aquaponics po diyan, uh, meron po tayong GP7C and orchards and plantation settings. So GP7C cocoa pellets is built on the principle of container and media in one and comes in the form of a compressed dry disc in a biodegradable netting. So this means GP7C will give you logistical and storage advantage. Uh, all GP pellet size have a, have a prepared tray holes. However, pellets are often used without tray. So either in crates or in plastic sheets. So magtatanong kung kailangan pa ba ito i-tray o hindi. So pwede po at pwedeng hindi. As long as meron po tayong uh, crates or plastic trays, pwede po natin to, pwede po natin gamitin. Then paano ba gamitin ang uh, GP7C? So choose pellet size depending on your crop type. So sa ngayon, meron po tayong dalawang sizes ng GP7C cocoa pellet. So meron po tayong 38mm by 45mm which is usually ginagamit po natin for a small seeded crop like yung mga brassica, lettuce, herbs, uh, solanaceous. Yun, yun, dito po yung 38mm by 45mm. Then meron po tayong 50 by 60mm na uh, GP7C cocoa pellet which is ginagamit po natin for large seeded crop. Like for example, yung mga flower beads po natin, kalabasa, patola. Then uh, pwede din po natin ito gamit, gamitin for uh, coffee or cacao. And pwede din po gamitin for uh, tissue cultured banana. Uh, pag nakapili na po tayo kung anong size po yung gagamitin po natin, i-hydrate lang po natin siya. So how? By placing in water-filled container or by spraying with overhead spray. So maglagay lang po tayo ng tubig sa container or basain lang po natin yung mismong pellet. Then after 4 minutes, yun. Mapupunlaan na po natin yung GP pellet po natin. Plant seeds or cuttings directly into hydrated pellets at the depth required for the particular crop type. So syempre, same pa rin with the... Uh, usual seedling media, uh, kung ano yung recommended na lalim ng boto, uh, yun lang din yung sundin po natin. Uh, GP7C cocoa pellet have an excellent water retention so it requires less watering. And it has zero nutrients so you can have as much precise fertilization program for your crop. Especially for sa mga naga-hydroponics and aquaponics. So uh, isa po talaga sa uh, malaking factor for a better na harvest is yung precise fertilization program. So ito po, uh, magagamit niyo po talaga ito. And it is 100% biodegradable. So sa mga nag-organic, so no worries po tayo, 100% organic po ito. So ano ba yung mga benefits using GP7C cocoa pellet? So ease of transport and deployment dahil nga uh, compressed disk na siya. So pwede niyong ibiyahe kahit saan. Uh, mabilis lang din siya i-store. Then, uh, mabilis lang din mag-plant uh, ng seedling. Improved germination and growth rate due to high quality medium and significant increase in root mass, improving survival rate once planted. So, mas madami po yung roots na makikita po natin dito using GP7C. Mini minimal transplant shock due to no damage in roots. Simply plant the whole pellet. So uh, based on experience, uh, especially pag nag-seedling tray tayo, so minsan yung uh, seedling natin na dinadala natin sa field, uh, madalas pag magta-transplant ka na, napuputol yung mga roots. Ganun. So dito sa GP7C, may eliminate na natin yon, Hindi na stress yung seedling natin, kaya uh, mas better po sa plant natin. Then environmentally friendly, no plastic. 100% biodegradable. And also, sa mga may katanungan po, uh, we are sharing our technical guides. So meron po tayong material safety data sheet. Meron din po tayong GP7C user guide and GP7C expansion procedure. 
And meron din po tayo yung leaflet just at Technoguide uh, para po sa mga gustong gumamit or gumamit po ng GP7C. And meron din po tayong mga video links. So, hindi ko lang ma-play kasi medyo mahaba po yung video pero yun, pwede niyo po tayo play kung sino po ang kung makikita niyo po yung mga gumagamit ng mga GP7C sa iba-ibang bansa. Then uh, for inquiries, you may contact us uh, dito po sa mga number na to or you can visit our office at 353 San Nicolas Street, Barangay 258 San Nicolas, Manila, Philippines. So thank you po sa lahat. Uh, I'm Harold Panisa po from Haberson Enterprises. Ayun. So may nakikita ko Sir Harold ng maraming questions about your presentation. So nakakatawa. So mamaya po, let's keep on ano po asking questions po no. Diyan po sa ating chat box. So gabitin po natin yung ating chat box. Uh, thank you so much for doing that. So mamaya po, i-raise po yan ng ating team uh, during our Q&A sa ating mga speakers. So Sir Harold, di ka ready ng questions for you later on. Ano? So maraming maraming thank salamat you, ulit, Sir Harold. Yes. And for sharing with us the different ways so we can protect our crops, you know, uh, our farmers will understand how important seedling protection, lalo-lalo na ang major problem ng ating mga magsasaka, ng ating mga farmer, ay ang mga uh, peste at diseases uh, sa kanilang mga tanim, no? hanggang sa kanilang, well, affected ang kanilang mga ani, lalo-lalo na na ang ating mga magsasaka ay nangangailangan ng ng magandang ani, ano yun, madaming ani na maganda yung quality. So, thank you for that, Sir yes. Harold. And again, uh, thanks to technology and modern innovation combined with sustainable farming practices, so we're able to better support the growth of our crops. So, hindi, na po, hindi pa po nagtatapos ang ating usapan dyan. So, we have another guest po joining us this afternoon to talk about another exciting topic. Tama po. Uh, to help us to grow our crops while using less resources, kaunting uh, less uh, um, na gamit ng, ng mga, uh, I think, gastos, something like that, pero magandang quality at ani ang meron tayo. So our next speaker po is an agricultural economist who started his career in microfinance and rural development He has 11 years of experience in the agri-food industry, particularly in uh, commodity trading operation across the Philippines and Southeast Asia. With his expertise in smart farming and controlled environment agriculture, he will share uh, valuable insights and perspectives from the field. Um, to share with us about the trends in hydroponics, uh, let's welcome local representative of uh, Rijkswan, Mr. Tark Bartlema. Sir Tark, good afternoon. Hi, Ryan. Uh, thank you for that kind introduction. Um, and a uh, very good afternoon to all. Let me share my screen. And... Sorry, something is a bit off here. Sorry, uh, I saw that I was uh, muted still. Um, can you hear me now? Hi, uh, yes, we can hear you. Okay, let me see. Uh, somehow my screen sharing It's not working ideally. There we go. Yeah, somehow, <laughs> here we go. Let me see how I can work through this. Um, is my screen now shared or not? Because the buttons, here we go. This seems to be better. Am I okay now, Ryan? Yes. 
Okay, there we go. Hey, yeah, sorry for the <laughs> for the tech issue. I uh, hear it solved. Um, so yeah, good afternoon. I'm Tark Bartlema. I'm the local representative for Rijkswaan. And Rijkswaan is a, a Dutch uh, vegetable seeds uh, breeding company. And we've been active in the Philippines for about 20 years now, making our seeds available here. Um, before I explain a little bit on company and, and cultivation techniques, etc., let me first emphasize that one of the uh, challenges or issues here in the Philippines is the relatively low uh, per capita consumption of vegetables. Uh, if you look at statistics, you may argue which ones are the right ones, but my in my view, uh, we're looking at a local consumption per capita per year of around 48 kilos, which is basically half of, of, of what it should be based on WHO uh, recommendations. Um, we should be consuming at least 250 grams of, of fruits and veggies per day, and, and we're definitely not there yet. The pandemic... Uh, however, uh, increase the overall awareness of how important vegetables are in our diet. Um, and I stated a few things here, which for most of you is, uh, is, is common knowledge. Um, the thing there is that because of pandemic, more people are now interested in including uh, not only more, but also higher quality uh, produce in their diet, which is... Uh, something that uh, is 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 good for 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 companies like us and 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 others in in this segment um so what we uh, what we as a company do is uh, develop varieties that are suitable for several climate conditions and several growing uh, technologies and uh, as marianne already mentioned uh, i'm proud to say that that Rijkswaan is indeed plowing back at least 30% of, of annual revenue in, into R&D. Um, we have breeding programs all over the world, uh, here in Southeast Asia, Vietnam, China, uh, several places in Africa, Central South America, Europe, of course. Um, all that with the focus on providing growers, consumers, retailers alike, with the suitable varieties to have be successful so, for growers to be successful in their market, but also to make sure that we service uh, client requirements. Um, then I'm proud to say that we'll be celebrating our 100th anniversary next year. So there's a lot of knowledge and uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, 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 the technology uh, the, uh, here in within our company. Um, as I said, we're not only singularly working with growers what we also do is we are working with both end users uh, consumers consumer panels we work with retailers we work with processors because we want to understand the whole the complete value chain and i think that is a, a very uh, it, it's that distinguishes us from from other uh, companies in 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 the industry um, all this is basically to translate what we see in end markets, to translate that back into our breeding programs and to be able to offer those kind of varieties to our growers to be able to service respective markets. Um, one of the examples uh, is, okay, what do we need to do in terms of taste texture? Uh, we need to work on, and this also fits in very well with SDGs, how to make uh, production processes more efficient. How can we prolong shelf life to reduce waste? Um, at the same time, we have changing climate conditions. There's other consumer demands uh, that are the far the growers are confronted with. Uh, all these aspects that you see here, we bring back into our breeding programs. A very simple example here is, is what we call NOx. It's uh, say no to oxidation. You all know uh, that at some stage you'll see this browning and pinking of lettuce. Uh, now that that doesn't look very nice uh, it creates uh, waste so what we now have are varieties with this particular trait included so that this whole pinking process is being delayed basically extending shelf life especially for processed lettuce uh, now who are interested in this growers that for example through processors supply the mcdonald's and the jollibee and uh, the kfc's right uh, 
all this to avoid waste in, in that complete supply chain. And that's why we look at it from a whole value chain perspective. Other examples are, for example, there's a trend towards more snack size type uh, produce. Now you'll see a few here. We've got these nice small snack uh, pepito uh, cucumbers. We have these very nice sweet, uh, sweet peppers, uh, pointy sweet peppers. Uh, what the market is also moving towards here is that we now have the really nice big sweet peppers that we're familiar with in Europe. Now, all these are now available here um given the right growing technology um these can be cultivated both in lowland and in highland uh, of course within certain limitations and and challenges but uh, we do all this to be able to provide options to growers to move towards the higher margin uh, segments of of the market um and again we see that market grow with double digit numbers. I'm looking at 10 to 15% uh, every year. And that's also what we see in uh, terms of the total area under greenhouse cultivation in the Philippines. It comes from a relatively low base, but you're looking at let's say 600 hectares at the moment countrywide. Of course, a lot of it is concentrated in the Tagaytay area, uh, Baguio, some in Bukit Non, but, um, and this includes also some of the lower tech uh, tunnel type, even the bamboo structures with plastic and everything. But we do see a 10 to 50% growth of that area under protection. Uh, and we see that that sector, that, that segment grow every year. And this is all confirmed by, we're all, we, we of course collaborate closely with greenhouse builders and, and they are busy. I can tell you that. So the greenhouse growers in the Philippines have a lot of contracts uh, with private sector parties, uh, also some uh, contracts uh, and, and some projects that are being done through uh, DA. Uh, but I can tell you that they are very busy and I'm always very happy with that because the assortment that we carry here, some of it is for open field, but really the bulk of what we do uh, works best under uh, protected cultivation. Uh, so, like I said, we work, uh, we look at it from a whole supply chain angle and, and what we also like to do, and that's why we work with chefs, with nutritionists, with dietitians, uh, to also drive consumption of uh, better quality produce. Uh, one of the one of our initiatives is is love my salad check it out on on, on socials uh it gives uh, <laughs> uh some inspiration and uh okay how to include more vegetables in your daily diet which is particularly a challenge for moms right to make sure that the kids eat more instead of going for a chicken joy better include uh and and and, and do a salad uh and uh this these are the things that that help with that um so the challenges and and these were there were a few things were already mentioned by the previous by by the previous presenters um we need to do more with less uh, water availability is an issue consumers want to have minimal application of crop management uh, uh methods right uh, we need to be more precise with the nutrients that we use in our growing process we're running out of certain things um at the same time Grower needs to look at profitability. So you're looking at uh, trying to increase yields per square meter. The retailers are asking for no residue type produce. So it needs to be clean and safe. Um, at the same time, we're challenged with a, 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 yeah, a lack of, of trained labor. Uh, and, and that's not only an issue in, in Europe and US, but even here in the Philippines. Um, and then I see a growing disease pressure. Um, you're looking at, for example, for tomatoes, uh, there uh, we see also for eggplants. Uh, so one of the things, uh, and, and it was already mentioned in the previous presentation, what to do, how to handle soil-borne diseases. My answer is very easy. Go towards a growing technique <laughs> by not growing in the soil. And that can be done with hydrophonics for in, in NFT or in app and flow uh, with, with uh, uh, systems, but it can also be easily done in, in grow bags, in a greenhouse, 
in which you have a sterilized uh, medium. Um, so, but one of the key things, of course, and, and, and okay, I'm preaching for my own church here, but it all starts with uh, the best quality seed. And, and our seeds typically germinate 95% uh, up. Um, also, they're a bit more pricey, but then again, it also gives you higher yield and longer shelf life. Um, but you still uh, get the numbers in. Um, so this is the hydro, because, okay, in the presentation, the presentation was titled, uh, okay, Trends Toward Hydrophonic. I would like to make that, I'm, I, li I would like to widen that a little bit. I think uh, we can describe it as a trend towards more protected cultivation. So a trend towards more controlled environment agriculture. Uh, why? Because we have all these adverse weather conditions, um so you have you need to be more efficient all this can be done in a hydrophonic system like you see here in the slide but you can also do that with a greenhouse structure in which you grow your plants in 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 like a grow back and and then you have a medium that you can manage properly uh, with for example a drip irrigation system having said that that means capex and it's okay that means there is, of course, you need to have uh, some some capital here to be able to move into this space. But the typical returns that we see is like, uh, yeah, uh, IRR. You're looking at basically uh, three, no, four or five years uh, to be able to get your investment back, uh, which in in my view is 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 not not that bad. Um, so strong move into hydro. It is uh, more efficient. Uh, you have more consistent uh, production. Even in lowland, you can make a lot of things work by cooling your water in, in this particular system, for example. More, the colder the water, the happier the plants are because uh, there's more uh, oxygen uh, in the water. So typically, uh, you'll be you should be looking at 24, 25 degrees for optimal production. You can manage the heat in your greenhouse with, with fans, uh, with shade nets so that the I don't want to dive too much into detail, but there's all kinds of solutions to even make the more adverse conditions, like, for example, in places like uh, Lipa, or I have a client uh, all the way in in, or in, in Bicol at, at, at sea level. Uh, I have clients in Iloilo. Uh, I mean, we're all over the country, but even in those hot places, system like this, you can make it work. And what you then do, is because you have invested in a slightly more expensive way to cultivate, the key there is also then to look at varieties that will give you a premium in your market. So instead of trying to compete with open field uh, produce that, that comes uh, from, from Baggio, for example, what you should do is look at premium varieties that are uh, in demand by uh, hotels, restaurants, the premium outlets. Um, so um, so that's a bit on the marketing side of things. But, but what this also enables is you have uh, okay, uh, ventilation around the plant, so less disease pressure. You don't have these soil-borne diseases. It is also a bit more uh, convenient work environment, so also for your labor. It's, it, this is a, an okay way to, to, to produce. Yeah, you see uh, some, yeah, like, a, like a, and this is a conservative estimate, but let's say 50K, uh, 50 kilograms per year up. And then there is the food safety angle. So we do see also these requirements coming in from retailers in other parts of the world uh, to have this uh, food safety, to have that traceability in place, and also uh, for, for them to see that, that actually all these things are done in, in a proper way. Um, so yeah, hydrophonics, I mentioned, we, we spoke about this briefly, uh, protected cultivation overall. Um, not, we also see a move into some indoor urban farming here in Manila. There is a market for that, even though you have higher capex and opex. Of course, you have to power uh, your farm with artificial light. But if you are able to sell, for example, arugula at 900 or 1,000 peso per kilo, also these models work. But here's the challenge, and, and this is something relevant and, and which I want to share with this uh, audience, is that we... It, a lot of growers approach me, say, Tark, we really would like to work with your gear. We really want to invest. Uh, the problem is, where do I find a good farm manager? And where do I find uh, good people to, to manage this and to be able to, to work with this, what I call uh, 
because this is not even high tech. Uh, this is what I call mid tech. Uh, this is not rocket science. We're not putting men on the moon. We're not performing a brain surgery here. Uh, but you need to be aware of, of, of certain concepts. And it starts with having proper protocols in place. You need to do some data collection on light intensities at several times a day. You need to keep an eye on your nutrient solutions. You need to keep an eye on your pH. Um, and then with that data, you can start looking at correlations with the end, uh, with, with your uh, output. And then, then, okay, why do I have, for example, lower yield over the last uh, coming months? We saw, for example, of course, this was also due to typhoon, but there's a shortage of cherry tomatoes, especially a month ago, couldn't find any cherry tomato. Why? Because the light intensities were so low in, in, in cloud cover in, in Bukit Non, that the productivity of the plants was just very low. Uh, now I have a solution for that because I'm also representing Philips with uh, lights for light augmentation, but that's a different topic altogether. But we see now growers getting more interested in those kinds of technologies because the clients are asking for consistent supply. And you cannot meet the, that demand if you have these fluctuations in, in, in these grow uh, conditions. Um, so yeah, those are clear impacts of what, ever since I'm in the Philippines, yeah, the, 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 the pattern is different from what it was uh, in 2006 when I arrived. Uh, and, and we have to deal with that and have to work our way around it. Um, but yeah, the training of, of people is, is one of the things that it can be an obstacle for the further and increased utilization of technologies like this. So. Yeah, that is a bit of a, uh, yeah, let's see how within this audience and, and, and with uh, several parties in our industry, we can work on. Um, so what we do is, uh, okay, we have our, our technologies available here. We have our seeds available here. I cannot run your farm, but what I can do is uh, share the insights and the experience that we have here and in other parts of the world in order to help you make your project as successful as, as possible. So basically increase the probability of success. Um, what East West is doing, for example, and, and uh, th that, will be, that will be in the next presentation, a lot of knowledge transfer and training. What East West does with open field, we do for greenhouse. Uh, I, th I think that's a proper way to summarize uh, how we work. So we work with all these individual growers. Um, to make sure that uh, they can run their greenhouse properly and that the inputs that they use are properly utilized. Because it's a shame if you spend and you invest in, in, in better genetics uh, for coming from us, and then it's not treated properly. You don't get the proper output, you don't get the yield. That is not uh, how they should be managed. So, so that's where we uh, play a very important role and, and that's where we help out. Um, yeah. And this is also um, mentioned earlier, okay, during pandemic, there's also more plantitos and plantitas, right? Now, that's all wonderful. Uh, some actually continued and from try growing on the balcony, they're now setting up greenhouses and they're starting also, they're moving, okay, establish their first 400 square meter, 800 square meter greenhouses. Now, I, I like that trend a lot. Uh, it means there's more local produce available. There is a very, there's several uh, groups online uh, and sometimes they're debating and I'm not getting into all that, but what we do see is that there's more interest in these better uh, products. And uh, my main advice for anyone who wants to move into this space is to first look at where your market is and, and what, where can you sell um, and what kind of quality is required and, and what is available in that market and then see where you fit in, and then look at what kind of technology uh, you would like to use. Um, so yeah, we see a lot of people now doing small greenhouse operations and they sell in the barangay, they sell to their Korean restaurant nearby. Um, yeah, and you'll be surprised, there's, there's still uh, on both sides, there I have growers that ask me, Tark, do you know a buyer for my produce? At the same time, I have consolidators that work into retail and into a uh, hospitality segment asking me, can you hook me up with more growers? So that's also one of the roles we play in, in this segment in order to uh, uh, help this uh, segment grow. No? Um, 
Yeah, briefly on local assortment, we have many lettuces. I, I run around 150 SKUs on all the different products that we have. One of the things that we have here is a very crispy type. Now, this is premium produce. So if you set up a hydrophonic system, don't grow, for example, simple romaine, because that is produce that can be grown also in soil in Baguio, for example. And yes, over the last couple of months, there was very high price, even for Baguio produce. But normally that is trading at 100, 150 peso per kilo. If you go for this kind of product, you can look at, let's say, 400 peso. Anyway, it depends on your lo local conditions. But this, this, this product is retailing in South Supermarket, where, close to where I live, at 600 pesos a kilo, right? So that gives you an idea. And it can be even higher if you move into this space, the Salanovas, which the chefs really like. But again, it's more expensive seed, but it also gives you... Uh, this is retailing at, let's say, 800 pesos a kilo. Uh, but again, you need to manage it properly. You need to be aware, you need to have a good outlet. One of the trends that we and and this is something standard. And I I know there's a there's a fellow Dutchman in in the audience. He's very in in the Netherlands. We're very familiar with this, right? We buy a lot of living lettuce. So this is with the root system uh, intact, uh, nicely presented. So it's like a bouquet. And it um, keeps your uh, lettuce fresh uh, for a longer period of time. Having said that, all our lettuces easily stay will stay okay in in the in in the ref for let's say 10, 14 days. But anyway, there's depending on how the supply chain was managed and whether it was cold chain and everything. But overall, we have longer shed, and that's also what we build into our 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 seed and in, into our breeding uh, programs. But this gives you an idea on, on what is possible. Eh? Uh, you can also do three. This is good for seed sales, obviously, because I will be selling three seeds per plug. But yeah, uh, you have three different kinds of uh, lettuce in, in, in one pot. It, it looks very nice, like a bouquet, no? Um, this is very popular in, in European retail. Um, yeah, I already showed you the, 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 the bell peppers. We have one, a few for open field, but mostly of, most of these are for inside the greenhouse. Um, Cherry tomatoes, very popular, also for greenhouse. Cherry tomato, open field, very difficult. Uh, table tomato, open field, yes, possible. But for the other varieties, then we have different colors of this. I'm looking at this chocolatey color. We have yellow, we've got orange, we've got all these things. And all of this with the focus to move growers into this higher uh, segment uh, market. And you may argue, Tark, that's only a small market. It has been, and it's the top of the pyramid. But the, but that that whole portion is increasing, uh, and 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 I think that's that's where the opportunity is. Um, so yeah, uh, Japanese type melons, sweeter melons. Uh, you can see these, and then the cucumbers I already showed you. Now all this to increase uh, vegetable consumption, and then yeah, uh, what I would like to see is that. Yeah, people, okay, it's okay to have your chicken joy uh, every now and then, but we should have more vegetable consumption. Uh, and, and, and that's what we're here to uh, assist with, yeah. And that uh, is basically what I wanted to share with you so far. And yeah, open for... Um, probably many questions later on yeah, yeah. <laughs> back to you Ryan thank you sir Tark um kayang kaya pala talaga nating uh, i-try no kung gusto natin yung hydroponics so medyo nagle-level up ang ating farming when it comes to sa pag sa pagtatalim ano po ng ating mga crops pero may available pong technology tulad ng presentation ni sir Tark no at uh, yes medyo sa tingin natin na mahirap kasi nga bago sa ating pandinig but don't worry about it kasi naandyan po sa ating tabi o sa ating likod to support us ang PSIA and also uh, Mr. Tark of uh, Rikes One to support kung gusto nating itry ang hydroponics um, sa the Netherlands po kakonti lang yung kanilang lupa mas marami ang kanilang anyong tubig so usong-uso sa kanila ang hydroponics at ayun po just to, to supply kung ano yung pangangailangan ng mga crops ng, ng kanilang bansa. So, ayan po. Uh, ay, by the way, uh, thank you po sa ating uh, representative from BPI, from Bureau of Plant Industry, 
Thank you, ma'am, for answering some questions and queries ng ating participants. No? Thank you so much po. Palakpakan po natin. At napakaganda ng usapan sa chat box. Nagpapapap nakikita ko po para lang silang nag-uusap. Kaya lang online. So thank you for that. Uh, to keep the conversation going po, uh, allow me to introduce our final speaker. Uh, she has been with uh, with uh, East-West Seed po for 10 years. Wow! She received her bachelor's uh, degree in agriculture at the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. Her passion lies in working with farmers and diverse partners with the goal of contributing to positive challenge with the agriculture sector. Ano po? To share with us uh, a capacity building model for crop diversification, let's welcome Senior Knowledge Transfer Specialist of East West Seed, uh, Ms. Kathleen Patlin. Ma, magandang hapon po. Magandang hapon, sir. Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Um, let me share my presentation. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay ba, sir? Nakikita po ba ng ating audience ang ating presentation? Yes, okay. ma'am. Ayan. Please. Sige. Sumala na po natin. Ano? So, okay. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, for this afternoon, I will be sharing with you the capacity building model being used by Knowledge Transfer uh, Philippines for crop diversification. So, I hope po na... Uh, may, marami tayong makuha from this uh, presentation. So, before, I think before uh, we get into the details of the model, no, I would like first to uh, give a brief background about the uh, Knowledge Transfer Philippines. So, Katie has been um, partnering and serving uh, smallholder farmers in the Philippines since 1999. And as it expands through the years, Katie is now also present in the different parts of Southeast Asia and Africa. So the objectives of KT are to increase the income of smallholder farmers and to catalyze the demand for improved farm inputs. Core to our um, approach is the tech, uh, techno demonstrations managed by our key farmers. So these demonstrations are used as a hub for intensive learning for our core uh, group farmers who spread the knowledge through their farming communities. Yeah. So how do we work with our farmers? No? So one of the approaches that we do is the peer-led demonstration, showcasing profitable and uh, sustainable production practices to our key farmers. So leveraging a peer learning approach, knowledge transfer specialists support farmers to manage hands-on demonstrations, uh, showcasing improved uh, production practices. So this is in addition to the training uh, being conducted through theoretical uh, approach. So kapag nagta-training po kasi kami, no, hindi lang siya more on theoretical. So alam naman natin po na mas naiintindihan, mas naaalala no, ng mga farmers yung uh, tinuturo mo kapag pinapakita mo ito sa kanila kung paano mo ito ginagawa. So we believe in that. Kaya talagang um, andan dun kami palaging magka partner yung aming theoretical and yung hands-on uh, approach namin uh, when doing trainings. Also, and another um, is providing long-term commitment no, through supervision of demonstration farm establishment. So KT specialists are giving technical advices from land preparation until harvesting. So ginaguide po natin yung ating mga farmers every step of the way from land preparation seed sowing until maka-harvest sila. So um, especially doon sa mga critical stages ng ating crops. So these uh, established demo farms are used as training hub for the key farmers, not only for the key farmers, pero yung neighboring farms, uh, neighboring farmers natin. No? So um, ini-invite natin yung ating mga katabing mga farmers to visit and Tignan nila kung ano yung nangyayari doon sa demonstration farms ng ating mga key farmers. So, yeah. And uh, also, yung ating mga key farmers are uh, being trained as farmer technician or farmer champions for them to develop skills and abilities to be passed on 
uh, to other farmers within their communities. So, syempre, um, yung project natin, hindi naman yan long-term dun sa area or hindi tayo nag-stay forever. So, um, what we do is, nagtitrain tayo ng mga uh, uh, potential farmers na when we uh, pull out dun sa area after yung project, sila na yung uh, pwedeng mag-train naman dun sa mga ibang interested farmers dun sa kanilang area. So, yun yung ginagawa natin. And to capacitate then um, what we do to capacitate yung ating mga farmer champions or farmer technicians, we conduct um, technical field days dun sa area where we invite yung ano, um, farmers from the nearby communities. And then, set up tayo dun ng mga um, uh, what what do we call that? Yung parang uh, learning stations, no? Kung saan yung mismo mga farmers natin, farmer technicians natin yung nagde-deliver nung um, topics, no? Uh, to make sure lang na talagang yun, na-share nila and at the same time, nabibuild yung kanilang confidence to share it with other farmers. So, there. Um, also, um, an intensive monitoring is being done to guide um, yung ating mga key farmers and ensure proper adoption ng mga practices natin. So as what I've said kanina, um, nandun tayo during the critical stages ng, ng production nila. No? So from seed sowing until makaharvest sila, uh, minomonitor natin and uh, binivisit natin yung areas nila to ensure talaga na proper yung kanilang pag-adapt doon sa mga uh, technologies or yung mga practices. So aside from that, um, comparing as well as building uh, from existing practices that enable a wider option of appropriate practices for farmers to adapt. Mademoiselle, do you have Kathleen, you're on mute. Ma'am Kat, nakamute ka. Yan. Ah, okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay na po? Ah, okay. Sige. So, yun. Um, as we can see in this picture, yun nga, um, sina ang nabanggit ko is binibigyan natin ng options yung ating mga farmers uh, depending on the availability of uh, inputs and at the same time, ano yung mas akma or ano yung mas uh, appropriate dun sa kanilang area. And then also, um, in addition, no, KT uh, established a learning hub, which was accredited by ATI as a learning site for agriculture last year, uh, 2022. And this year, um, the hub was uh, the hub got its certification on good agricultural practices on various crops. So also action research, uh, trials of innovative or improved techniques on vegetable production. And uh, training of trainers no, are being conducted in the uh, learning site. So, yung ating technical hub, which which is located in Bukidnon, no, uh, serves as an avenue for the new learning practices and techniques that we also share with our uh, farmer uh, partners. So, nagkakanda kami ng mga trials dito and other experiments no, na um, yung result, pag nakita namin na okay, sinashare din natin sa ating mga farmers. Ayan. So also, um, yun nga, um, of course, syempre, in this digital world, di ba, talagang ano tayo eh, um, online na tayo, no? So technology is very exciting for agriculture and has limitless potential to connect farmers with information that will allow them to be more successful. Um, so tools like uh, our YouTube uh, channels and GrowHow, yung GrowHow is our website, wherein makikita ng mga farmers yung ating mga lear uh, develop uh, learning materials no maybe i can go through with it para po sa benefit ng ating mga farmers na kasama ngayon or kahit yung mga interested into vegetable production um i can let me know po kung nakikita yung okay so ito po yung ating website where yun nga po nabanggit ko na nandito yung ating mga learning materials no we have crop guides so ito yung um, develop po na guide natin sa pagtatanim ng iba't ibang klase ng gulay. Ang kagandahan po nito, um, hindi lang siya nasa isang lingwahe. No? Uh, different languages available yung ating crop guides. 
even dito sa Philippines, meron tayong Bisaya, meron tayong Tagalog and English. So, ito po ay free no, na madadownload ng ating mga farmers. We also have yung technical guides. So, ito naman specific topics to no, na nakafocus dun sa mismong topic. So, let's say sa home garden. So, ito yung guide nila on how to uh, do home garden. So, meron din kung problem nila, halimbawa bacterial wilt. Meron din po tayong guide dito. So, ito yung ating ano, um, website. no So, hopefully yung ating mga farmers ma-visit ma nila itong site na to. So, explore natin and then maybe may makuha po tayo from this. Okay. Oh, wait. I'll get... Ayan. Sorry. Ayan. Okay na po. Nakabalik ba ako sa slide? Okay. All right. So, wait, um, yun. So, ito mga crop guides po natin kasi na ito or may physical din kami na pinapamigay during our training. So, um, coupled nung ating ano, syempre hindi naman talaga nila matatandaan lahat ng uh, tinuturo natin during training. So, we provide this learning materials. Also, ayan, and lastly po, no, uh, aside from the different approaches mentioned kanina, uh, Katie evolved its role by adding market facilitation in the equation. So alam naman natin na yung market talaga ay isa sa mga nagiging problema talaga ng mga farmers natin. They can produce um, vegetables pero isa talaga ito sa uh, nagiging problema nila pagdating na ng harvest season nila. So saan nila ibebenta yung kanilang um, products. So dito po, um, uh, isa po sa aming uh, ginagawa, no? uh, nililik natin yung ating mga farmers sa iba't ibang market channels, katulad ng mga food chains, private hospitals, concessionaires, public hospitals, feeding programs, uh, and detention centers, uh, e-commerce, and food processor. Um, also, uh, aside from that, no, um, we're linking also the farmers to different market channels. We we were also able to create link to connect farmers to business service providers such as insurance insurance provider and uh, banking institution. So, yun, um, just to give you a siguro figure, ito po ay um, lahat ng initiated po ng KT, no? na yung mga na-link natin ng mga um, market channels dun sa ating mga farmers. Ito ay... Siguro uh, kabuuan po ito no hindi lang siya nakafocus dun sa ating um crop diversification pero gusto ko lang pumakita or gusto ko lang i-share na ito na yung um ilan sa mga nagagawa natin para dun sa ating mga farmers given um plus dun sa volume kung gaano ka karami yung nai nai uh, benta ng ating mga farmers so mostly ang pinakamalaki talaga or yung volume no kung saan napupunta yung mga naibebenta yung mga produkto ng ating mga farmers ay sa public hospitals, uh, feeding and detention center. So since malaki talaga yung requirement nila for um vegetables. Uh, another next natin is yung sa concessionaire and yung mga private hospitals. So ibig sabihin po may market tayo, kailangan lang nating hanapin talaga siya within dun sa area natin. So yeah. Ayan, um, siguro to show you some photos po no? um, from our project. Um, ito yung market na, uh, pagmamarket ng ating mga farmers sa Bukid noon. So, um, yung ating coffee vegetable farmers no? na in natin. Um, ito yung during sa pag-deliver pag nila ng product nila sa uh, provincial hospitals in Bukid noon. So, ayan. So, sila mismo yung nagsasort ng product sila mismo yung nagde-deliver and um, tinutulungan natin sila, tinuturoan natin sila kung paano makipag-negotiate, paano, paano makipag-transact no, dun sa mga institutional buyers or dito sa mga um, hospitals. Another, ito naman po is with um, yung sa mga rice farmers natin no? um, in uh, Saragosa, Nueva Ecija and sa San Mateo, Isabela. So ito naman ay um, during their transaction ng kanilang produce kay Dizon Farms. So yun, na-link din natin sila kay Dizon Farms. Ayan. 
Um, ano lang, uh, just to share with you yung ilang mga uh, projects natin under diversification or kung saan ginawa natin itong diversification, kung saan in-apply natin itong mga nabanggit natin na capacity building model, no? So, first is yung ating coffee vegetable. Um, ito is in partnership with GIZ and Nestle way back in 2021. Actually, naka two, dalawang phase tayo dito sa ano, um, partnership na ito, 2019 and 2021. So, we were able to train 14 uh, coffee farmers in Bukidnon. This, the, the area is in Bukidnon. So, a total of 11.5 uh, tons of vegetables yung na, nabenta and nakonsume ng ating mga farmers. Yung value nito uh, amounting to almost 300,000. Another naman po is again in partnership with uh, GIZ, no? Um and Franklin Baker. So ito naman is coconut and vegetable. So uh, the project um right now actually nandito ako sa project area. Um it is in Bicol and Quezon. So we have uh two provinces covered under this project. Um And yung target natin for this project is to train 270 coconut growers through farm business school eh, good agriculture practices. So FBS gap for coconut. And also for the uh, ano naman, so the, the diversification, um, uh, we are targeting to establish three demonstration farms no, in uh, San Lorenzo Ruiz. Um, Santa Elena in Camarines Norte and Kalawag in Quezon. So there. And also uh, we are mentoring 44 coconut vegetable champions. So aside from the demo areas, um, each uh, coconut farmers uh, um, are establishing no, their own um, area. So small lang siya, 50 to 100 square meter just to try and to practice yung mga Um, vegetable practices natin, no? And then, yan. And last, um, rice and uh, vegetables naman natin. So, ito naman is in partnership with um, DA Phil Rice. So, ito po ay nagsimula no kasagsaga ng pandemic. 2020, I think, uh, 2020 ito. Sa so, ngayon po, meron na tayong pang ikaapat na uh, phase, no? Ikaapat na yung uh, ika- apat na phase na natin ng partnership with um, DA Field Rice. So sabi ko nga po, nag-start ito noong 2020. And then after a year, nagkaroon ng phase 2. Then since successful yung ating um, dalawang uh, implemented projects, um, under yung rice base ng DA, uh, DA Field Rice last year, last year lang po, no? Um, na buo yung ikatlong ano natin partnership sa kanila or yung ikatlong phase ng ating project and then ngayon um recently lang no early this i think uh, second quarter of this year um again nagkaroon tayo ulit ng partnership sa kanila ito naman po ay um currently ang area natin ay sa uh, Castillejos Zambales and um San Carlos in Negros Occidental so There um we're helping our rice farmers no doon sa nabanggit ko na dalawang areas. So uh, for the dito ano lang I, I um bigyan ko lang po kayo ng uh, parang ano ba yung accomplishment natin dito sa apat na uh phases natin ng project with the Field Rice. So we were able to train um 454 farmers, rice farmers no under doon sa apat na phase na yon and I um There will be more pa um since the project this current project will be in uh will end on um I think April 2024. So may mga ite-train pa tayo ng mga farmers. And also since yun na nabanggit ko po kanina no um dito nag-start yung partnership natin with Tizon no dito sa yung phase 1 ng ating project with uh the Afield Rice. So overall total of uh, 39.8 tons of vegetables We're able to, ano, um, uh, sell it to Bison Farms. So, with a monetized value of 1.3 million. So, yun po yung na i, yung baga na na add na income dun sa ating mga rice farmers.
And yeah, I think this would end my presentation. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, Miss uh, Kathleen. Apakaganda nung sinare nyo po. Actually, uh, ang dami ko na naman natutunan. At siguro, may, may we request to to share with the website ni, ni Iswesid yung para po ma, maklik na nila at mapunta na sila doon. Okay. Nakatawa, ako yung una na maghahanap kung pa paano yung mga easy na pagdating sa paghahalaman sa pagtatanim. Yung pesticide, intercropping, andun lahat. As easy as one, two, three po. So, ini-invite ko po ang lahat na puntahan yung link na papadala ni Miss Kathleen or yung website po. Bisitahin nyo kasi malaking tulong po sa atin yan, lalo lalo sa mga farmers. And I request po ulit everyone na pasalamatan po natin ang ating uh, mga speakers this afternoon for sharing the, uh, their expertise with us. So, napakalaking tulong nito para sa atin. Pa-heart react po or or clap no para sa ating mga speakers. Ayan, maraming maraming salamat po. Okay, and because this is a usapan or a conversation, we want to hear your thoughts and now this is the time to ask your questions. Kung meron doon sa mga chat box na nagaganap ng mga ng mga usapan no and partnerships also, may nagaganap na doon sa baba sa chat box. Um pwede niyo pong tanungin ngayon our uh in our uh, question and answer portion with our And now to facilitate the Q&A portion of the session, let's welcome PPSA Programs Manager, Ms. Monica Milano. Hi, Ms. Monica. Thank you very much, Kuya Rai. And a big, big, big thank you, of course, to our speakers for sharing their knowledge as well as their insights. And of course, for joining us on this important conversation on the seed industry. So I'm pretty, pretty sure it sparked a lot of interest with everyone, as in evidence of both Zoom and Facebook Live na chat boxes. So... Before that, let's bring back first all of our speakers. All right. We're just missing Sir Tark. Oh. Hmm, excuse me. <laughs> all right. So everybody's back here. So let's start off with our... Q&A with the first question. I actually leave this to either Sir Gabby or Miss Mary Ann to answer. So the first question is, um, this is from Sir Virgilio Castillo from Facebook Live. He asked, nowadays, there are a lot of sellers and vendors of seeds. So what is the role of PSIA in the monitoring as well as the monitoring of the quality of germination and of the seeds? So yes, Bob. Um, sino po sa inyong dalawa? <laughs> um, Gabby, would, uh, would you like me to take a shot at that? Yes, yes. Go ahead, madam. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, the, the member uh, companies of uh, PSIA, of course, we we sell seeds, no? Uh, abiding by the um, standards set by the Bureau of Plant Industry as far as germination, and uh, is concerned and also purity. Um, that's why we keep on emphasizing that um, it is important for farmers to only buy seeds from reliable uh, seed dealers because uh, there are times though that um, the storage condition in the dealer shops are not you know, optimal and so when when seeds you know coming from the the company's warehouse actually leave, leave the, the 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 company's premises and then you know are are stored in the dealer's sub, uh, shop sometimes uh without a good storage condition the germination may actually uh, decrease but as far as seed companies are concerned we also monitor the seeds that we actually uh sell through our distributors we we monitor their germination quite uh regularly so that's how we keep you know we we keep we keep track of the quality of uh, of seeds that are are made available to to the public thanks miss Ann. maybe sir gabby would you want to add to her response so yeah it's really difficult to have quality assurance from any dealer. That's why, well, what we usually say is uh, just like what 
uh, President Mary Ann said, buy from reliable uh, shops. And I think one, one hallmark is, well, we are proud to say PSIA membership. No? Kasi we also police our membership, our members. So And, and even before, before we accept them to our association, we, we should have some confidence in their ability to produce quality seeds. So for for everyone's um, assurance, doon na lang sa mga reliable at hanggat maaari, PSIA member. Uh, so, yan. Just just one tip. No? just If it's not a PSIA member, mali nyo, you are looking for seeds na wala talagang binebenta ng aming mga members, uh, you have no choice. But, if you're if you're looking for seeds that our members are selling that's what we recommend that's what we advise hangga't maaari sa mga ano na mga well we 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 love to say mga legitimate uh, sources just a tip just a recommendation for for you thank you thank you so much sir gabby and thank you again to miss mary ann sayok so Jumping from the seeds, now we talk about the media. So we have a question from um, our participant, another one from Facebook Live. So this is from Becky Palier asking, what are the economic benefits, um, specifically in terms of profit, of using this kind of cocoa choir compared to the locally sourced cocoa choir? Po? Sir Harold? Okay, po, uh, thank you for the question. So um, GP7C po is... Uh, a RHP certified po siya na uh, product which is ang RHP po is a uh, potting soil trade regulation so this certifies that the product meets the relevant quality requirements for example water absorption air content pH and nutrients it also provides more certainty that the substrate or yung pellet mismo is clean and pure and can be safely uh, used without risk sa crop po natin. Yan, tulad nga po nang na-mention ko kanina, uh, yung GP pellet po natin is pathogen-free, insect pest-free, uh, mas mabilis po natin ma-store. Uh, kung nasa Manila ka, then nasa farm, ang farm mo ay nasa Mindanao or nasa mga provinces, pwede mo lang ipadala through LBC or GNP. So, kung preferred mo ang GP, walang problema. Uh, pwede mo ipadala kahit saan. Then, uh, mas mami-minimize din po natin yung application ng synthetic fungicide kasi yung, usually yung mga locally, uh, ano natin, ng mga coco choir, actually nag apply po talaga tayo ng fungicide just to eliminate yung mga uh, airborne diseases natin. So, using this, this uh, GP7C, uh, ma-eliminate po natin yun. So, yun po so far. Hopefully, nasagot po po yung question. Thank you very much, Sir Harold. Just a follow-up question we noticed on the chat box here on Zoom that we have a lot of people asking where they can avail GP7C pellets po. Are these online? Uh, uh, sa ngayon po, hindi pa po kami available sa Lazada or Shopee. Pero uh, pwede nyo po kami makontakt sa Facebook page po namin. Uh, may messenger ano din po kami. So uh, every day po or aside from sa Sunday pwede nyo po kami makontakt doon. Uh, pwede po kayo order Regarding the price, uh, doon na lang po, doon na lang, isa office na lang po ang i-contact nyo. So, yun po. Alright. Thank you very much, Sir Harold. If you could, um, I don't know if you shared it already in the chat box po, but if you could share your Facebook page also so that those who were asking earlier about where they could avail CGP7C, okay. we could, uh, ano, so they could reach out na din po sa inyo. So thank you very much, Sir Harold. Now we will jump to Sir Tark for his question. So your question, po, Sir, is um, what tips and tricks can you share with us when it comes to um, trying to go into hydroponics as a business, especially for small-scale producers? Um, yeah, I, I, I briefly mentioned that earlier uh, a, a bit. No? Um, check the market first. Uh, before you decide what to grow. Um, there's a lot of online material available. Um, then again, 
you have to be a bit selective because not everything is i mean it's, it's the same with uh fake news no S some of the material is okay and, and some is not so okay so you would have yeah be a little bit selective but but check out the online resources in terms of what kind of technologies and and where you want to get started um you can start this at a very small at, at very small scale uh even with simple grow box and do a little bit with plastic cups and all that and when you have the hang of it you can start moving into using this uh these uh these gutter systems and then establish a greenhouse etc but it all all boils down to for whom what market do you want to produce is it for hobby and only family consumption is it for a local restaurant uh do you want to do fruiting crops like cherry tomato because that's then a different technology a different growing system uh so you need to prepare properly before spending anything uh if you if it's a hobby and you have a budget, yeah, okay, you can do okay, okay. you you can do your thing, but but um, if you really want to want to run it as a business, make sure you secure and and have that mark. Look at the availability of the inputs, yeah, consistent supply of your nutrients, for example. Um, so yeah, that, that that's one of the key things. Too often people start and then they get lost a little bit, and then there's there's not a real direction. So. If I make use this uh, opportunity, I want to share with you this booklet. I'm not sure if you can see it properly. No, not really. It's <laughs> Observation Technology in the Philippines. And Marianne knows this. This was a book that was prepared by Copia and DA. And maybe this can also be made available online uh, because it, it's a very nice introduction to overall protected cultivation uh, techniques. Um, and I looked for it, I, I, I couldn't find it. So maybe there's an angle because you can start also. If you don't want to do hydrophonic, you just want to do a greenhouse with soil. That's already a good start. If you want to do a greenhouse with the soil, with a, with a substrate, that's even better. Um, but yeah, th this little brochure gives already some some inspiration in, 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 this, in this area. Um, yeah, and one of the key things here the, the first step is to, for example, instead of doing direct seeding with the risk of rain uh, messing it up and everything, first go through that sowing tray. That, that, that's, the first, that's a very simple tip for any grower that's grow whatever you do, whether you use my seeds or not, make sure you move them through a sowing tray first so that the, the, the plant already has a bit of a root system and is already strong enough and can handle already uh the the outside conditions right that is the first step of improving uh cultivation uh, techniques yes thank you so much sir tark i hope a lot of people got some their pens and papers to take notes of those tips and tricks for hydroponics farming so let's move to miss Catalin. so for the um knowledge and transfer hub as well as the um capacity building initiatives of east west seed so we wanted to understand what were the or if there were any challenges when you implemented the model for crop diversification and how did you overcome it Paul? okay po. um definitely there there are challenges no but i think um one of the main challenges that we encountered is yung mindset ng farmer especially if since ito ay um, diversification, we introduce vegetables to them. So, hindi ito yung primary crop nila. So, uh, with the mind na kailangan nilang mag-add ng additional crops dun sa area nila, yun yung, I think dun minsan may, may ano eh, may nakakaroon ng, ng problem or nakakaroon ng challenge on paano mo sila ma-convince ma to add vegetables dun sa kanilang, um, nor, uh, uh, tawag dito, um, uh, tanim nila no yung yung current na tanim nila so with that um explaining kung kung ano yung um advantage ng having vegetables no uh doon sa kanilang um farm and also ensuring na nandun ka nandun kami all the way na to, to support and to guide them doon sa pag-establishment pag-establish na ng vegetables i think yun yung um nakita na nagginawa namin no to uh, encourage ng ating mga non-vegetable uh, farmers to venture also yung vegetable 
So, yeah. I think yun yung masashare ko. Thank you very much, Ms. Kathleen. And we also just have a quick follow-up question. So, we also had farmers asking um, how they could avail of your training services po and is it free? Um, okay po, for partnership po, if you want to partner with us or um, magkaroon tayo ng collaboration, you can message us po dun sa ating uh, Facebook page. I think nilagay ko po yung um, Facebook page natin, F Facebook page ng um, Knowledge Transfer Philippines dito sa ating chat box. So in if interested po kayo, you can message us and um, very active ang ating Facebook. no So um, idadirect po tayo doon sa um right person to communicate po. Ayan. Thank you very much, Ms. Kathleen. And, and I also want to thank all of our speakers with us here today for sharing their insights again through our Q&A portion. I know we have a lot of questions both on Facebook and on Zoom, but unfortunately, we don't have that much time to answer all of these questions. So yeah, but just keep them coming. We'll keep trying to answer them on the chat boxes that we have both on Facebook and on Zoom. So again, thank you so much to our speakers. And of course, on behalf of the PPSA, um, I'd like to thank our speakers from the PSIA for partnering with us for this learning session. So I think you, um, thank you also to our participants for your questions. And we hope you learned a lot from our session today. So back to you, Puya Rai. Thank you, Monica. And also thank you to our speakers, Ms. Kathleen. Thank you again, Sir Tart, Sir Harold, and also to Maps. Thank you, po, Sir Gab. Maraming maraming salamat po. And now to formally po, to close uh, the session, let's welcome po our uh, PPSA Country Director, uh, Ms. Angel Bautista. Ma'am, magandang hapon po. Good afternoon, Ryan. Thank you so much. So magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Um, thank you for joining us in today's Usapan Session on Seeds. Um, nakita ko po meron pong mga uh, nag-attend from PPSA members, of course. We have also attendees from government and some from academe. And meron din po akong nakita ang mga dati ko pong katrabaho sa um, Nestle who are in the call in the learning session. So thank you for being here. And throughout po the past several months, nakasama po ng PPSA kayo na talakayin at pag-usapan ang iba't ibang topics on agriculture. So tulad nga po ng sabi ni Ryan kanina, uh, madami na pong naging usapan series. Uh, we had one on responsible investing sa cacao, and then for coffee uh, on regenerative agriculture, and then we also had um, technologies that help address food loss, how our partners are doing their part in, of course, women's economic empowerment, yun po yung aming learning session ng August, and how we can make rice farming sustainable for future generations, yun po yung aming October learning session. We hope that throughout this series of sessions, you are able to help you learn and grow. We also hope that these Asapan sessions help inspire you na magpatuloy po sa agriculture. So this is why kami po sa PPSA would like to thank all our members and partner organizations na nakipag-collaborate po sa amin in these Asapan sessions. And syempre po, uh, yung mga nag attend na walang sawa po na sinasamahan kami sa halos isang taon na po ng usapan series. And kaya naman po, it is only right and fitting na we are closing this year's usapan series with a very important topic. Ito nga po yung ating um, seeds or binhi na topic. So sabi nga po, uh, I mean, I, I know pa ulit-ulit po sinasabi kanina na ang success po sa pagtatanim ay nakasalalay sa simula pa lang kasi kailangan po talaga ang gamitin ay right planting material. So allow me to thank the Philippine Seed Industry Association led by Dr. Gabi Romero and Dr. Mary Ansayok, ang public uh, ang private sector co-chair ng PPSA for partnering with us and to our speakers for sharing their expertise and insights. Um PSIA is one of the biggest players leading the efforts in fostering the growth of the seed sector through their contributions to production, supply and the regulation of the seeds market. So today's session offers a glimpse of the incredible work that they are doing for the seed sector. So ngayon po, itong hapon na to, uh, we learned the important role of seeds as the beginning of life and the future of agriculture. Uh, Hinighlight po ng ating speakers that the seed sector is playing a crucial role in food security and the sustainability of our planet. And we hope that this important conversation on seeds will help us spread awareness 
on the many ways we can grow our seeds and create more food for our uh for the Filipino people while minimizing impact po sa ating environment. So today's presentation shows us that seeds play a multifaceted faceted role in agriculture in ensuring of course food security, biodiversity con conservation, sustainability and income generation. In emphasize din po na producing high quality seeds is important sa agricultural development po ng isang bansa and its ability to meet the challenges of the future. So magsha-share lang po ako ng some statistics. As of 2022, the agriculture sector constitutes 9.55% of the Philippines' total GDP. So pag tinignan po natin itong mga numbers na to, we can tell that there is untapped potential for further increasing the sector's contribution. Pero kailangan po muna natin ma-recognize that there is a need to boost our seed supply to improve agricultural production so we can be a self-sufficient country. Uh, there is a research conducted by the Goldstein Market Intelligence uh, na nagpo-project po na ang Philippine seed market is poised to reach 1.9 billion by 2025 with a compound annual growth rate of 10.8%. So this data highlights the undeniable growth potential within the seed sector. So after today's session po, I hope na we will seize yung opportunities na to. Uh, if we work towards nurturing the growth of the seeds market, we can also drive the growth of Philippine agriculture. So to facilitate this growth, we need to put our heads together. Kapareho po nung ginawa natin ngayon na meron po tayong mga experts and share our knowledge and best practices so we can develop high quality seeds that will enable our market to flourish. I know there are na meron po tayong mga scientists, industry leaders, who are capable of creating impact that can influence the transformation that we want to see in the seeds industry. With this pool of experience and insights, we can set the stage for groundbreaking innovations. And by learning from each other, we hope we can improve our farming practices, adapt to changing environmental conditions, and ensure that our seeds are not only abundant, but also resilient and can meet our market standards. And of course, important din po ang uh, partnerships if we aim to achieve inclusive growth for the agri sector. So by fostering an ecosystem of support where we can share our knowledge and resources, we can collectively address the challenges faced by the industry. It is our pleasure at PPSA na kami po yung nagiging platform for these dialogues that can lead to action. If we can spark collaborative actions po through these um, dialogue sessions or these learning sessions, these conversations that we organize, then it would mean na na-achieve po namin yung aming goals. So let us continue to tap into each other's strengths and stay informed on the latest developments to ensure that our seeds are a driving force behind a sustainable and self-sufficient future for our agri-sector. Hindi po nagtatapos ang ating usapan series. Definitely, we will be back again next year. Pagpapatuloy po ng PPSA ang learning sessions at hindi po kami titigil sa pag-iisip ng mga interesting topics together with our members and partners. I know for a fact that uh, in July next year, uh, we are planning na yung learning session po namin will be with East West again for, of course, uh, for Nutrition Month. And hanggang sa muli po nating pagkikita, magandang hapon po ulit sa lah ating lahat and let us continue to grow and consume together for a more sustainable Philippine agriculture. Thank you. Back Maraming to you, Rai. Maraming salamat, Miss A. And that ends today's learning session po. At uh, sa muli po, maraming maraming salamat po sa sumama sa amin sa ngayong hapon po sa learning session ito sa Usaping Binhi. Ano po? And this session is brought to you by the Philippines Partnership for Sustainable Agriculture in the PPSA. And of course, uh, one of our member, no? si Philippine Seeds Industry Association or the PSIA. So see you again po in our next Usapan session next year. So good afternoon, everyone. Have a great week ahead and advance. Merry Christmas, everyone. Bye-bye.